What are you saying, Nintendo? If I post videos of Nintendo games to YouTube without registering them into the program, then I am not allowed to receive a share of the advertising proceeds from YouTube? Doesn't that completely overlook fair use? Hello everyone, it's your favorite copyright attorney, Leonard French, back with a video about the Nintendo Creators Program. I'm currently working on a few other videos, but this one seemed quite timely. And since I've got Zelda on the brain for the past week and a half, I wanted some answers to these questions you've been asking, too. One of the problems in modern copyright law is the complete lack of uniformity when it comes to the use and licensing of copyrighted material. As the law stands now, copyright grants exclusive rights to the rights holder, and fair use is left to future defendants, who must research and interpret case law and hope that they have the resources to defend a dispute, even an illegitimate dispute. If you are a creator on YouTube who makes use of anybody else's copyrighted material, even a fair use, you might know how difficult it is to fully research and obtain licenses for any material that might not be a fair use. The more content that you use, the more licenses you may have to obtain, and suddenly copyright clearance becomes a major issue in order to keep your channel going. And if you are not licensing any content, and relying primarily on fair use, Jim Sterling, then you might also already know how little recourse there is when another channel files a false or unmeritorious takedown or claim on one or more of your videos. So, in comes Nintendo, who seems to be using a blanket approach to identify content by content ID and not in accordance with Lens for Universal Music, which requires full consideration of fair use before filing a copyright claim. Or perhaps Nintendo doesn't expect that small channels will oppose the giant Japanese megacorporation that is Nintendo. In the past, Nintendo has gone after just about anyone that uploads content that uses Nintendo properties, including our favorite game critic, Jim Sterling, who allegedly got claims from both Nintendo of Japan and Nintendo of America, deadlocking the two since only one organization can claim monetization to a video. This even included the famous Super Mario edition of Minecraft for the Wii, where Nintendo issued copyright claims on videos that were posted to YouTube because of the game's use of the Super Mario 64 music. The developer of the Minecraft mashup pack claims to have had permission from Nintendo, but strikes were apparently issued anyway. Another report claims that Nintendo regularly removes videos of ROMs and hacks that it finds on YouTube, claiming that these represent piracy and not a fair use of Nintendo's works. And yet another article claims that Nintendo issued a takedown notice to the host of the website for No Mario's Sky for infringement of Nintendo's copyrights in its Super Mario video game franchise, including the audiovisual work, the images, and the fictional character depictions. So, if you want to use Nintendo's comment content, you can sign up for this creator's program and begin monetizing your channel and your videos after your approval, as long as you follow their terms and procedures. It's called the Nintendo Creator's Program, and I'll link to it in the description below. And this is where I need to get on my soapbox and once again complain that copyright's purpose is to promote the sciences and the useful arts. And while Nintendo is most certainly promoting the sciences and the useful arts by furthering the entire video games industry with its focus on gameplay and innovation, startup creators also have rights to make fair uses of Nintendo's material without subjecting themselves to the Nintendo Creators Program, which requires you to agree to share your revenue with Nintendo. And, while Nintendo says that registration in the program will not be refused because of views or opinions expressed in your videos, those opinions must still be in accordance with their terms of service, which contains a code of conduct limiting your right to say certain things that Nintendo considers objectionable, including, but not limited to, anything that could negatively affect users from fully enjoying the Nintendo Creators program. Uh, engaging in unlawful or otherwise objectionable conduct in relation to the content or the program, attempting to reverse engineer any aspect of the content, which is otherwise a perfectly legal thing to do, and any content that infringes on Nintendo's brand, image, or content, and disclosing or leaking any confidential or proprietary information in connection with the Nintendo Creators Program. But what if you are a creator who doesn't want to join the Nintendo Creators Program, but wants to make a fair use of their content? 
Doesn't Nintendo have a duty under Lens for Universal Music to fully consider whether your use of their content is a fair use? Back to its program, Nintendo further reserves the right to terminate the agreement at any time if you are in breach or default of any term of this agreement or the program guidelines, or if Google or PayPal stop providing their services. Nintendo does say they might give warnings for minor violations. If your account is terminated for any reason, you will lose all advertising revenue and you must immediately take down all videos with any Nintendo content. Disputes with Nintendo go through their own internal consumer services department where they attempt to resolve the matter privately. If you can't resolve the, the matter without court intervention, then you consent to exclusive jurisdiction in the District Court of Kyoto, Japan. To participate in the program, you must be of legal majority age, which is 18 in the U.S. and 20 in Japan. You must certify that you are not and have not been involved with or connected to any anti-social forces, including, without limitation, organized crime groups or illegal activities. Yakuza, I'm sorry, Nintendo won't allow you to share ad revenue if your organization conducts illegal activities. Nintendo lists a fairly large number of supported titles. The list appears to only contain games that are owned by Nintendo, leading me to believe that this program does not cover titles that were released on Nintendo systems but were not made by Nintendo Corporation. To get started in the program, you must have a Google account and a PayPal account. You log in with Google, you agree to the terms, you enter your PayPal information, and then click a link in a confirmation email. The next time you log in, you'll see your YouTube channels and videos and be able to choose those for inclusion in the program. You can register single videos or entire channels. Registering an entire channel shares all of the revenue with Nintendo at what appears to be a rate that allows the creator to keep 70% of the revenue. If you register just single videos, then you get to keep only 60% of your share of YouTube's advertising revenue. So that's 70% or 60% of the already 55% that you get of the ad revenue on YouTube, if I have my numbers correct. It takes about three business days for channels or videos to be reviewed and approved. Nintendo claims that a 72-hour period is required for them to verify that videos and channels comply with their terms of service. You must include a licensing statement in each video. The disclosure statement may be spoken in the video or as on-screen text. In its frequently asked questions, Nintendo ominously states that you do not have to register with the Creators Program to continue posting videos. Quote, however, if you sign up for the Nintendo Creators Program, you can receive a share of the advertising proceeds Nintendo receives from your YouTube channel. What are you saying, Nintendo? If I post videos of Nintendo games to YouTube without registering them into the program, then I am not allowed to receive a share of the advertising proceeds from YouTube? Doesn't that completely overlook fair use? A search of the Nintendo Creators Program page for the word fair, as in fair use, yielded zero results. The program does not cover videos posted to other sites other than YouTube. It does not cover games that are not supported by the program and suggests that videos or channels that do not contain games on the list of supported games should not be registered with the program. Your content is not allowed to be used in the program if the gameplay uses unauthorized tools, devices, or software, such as cheats or tool-assisted speedruns. These are considered violation of the Code of Conduct and the Terms of Service. The Creators Program is currently only available in the U.S., Japan, Canada, Brazil, Mexico, Panama, Chile, Peru, and Argentina. Nintendo offers no information about whether the program will be opened up to other regions like Europe or China. On a separate site dedicated to some of Nintendo's common legal issues, Nintendo states its position on allowing ROMs. Quote, The problem is that it's illegal. Copyrights and trademarks of games are corporate assets. If these vintage titles are available far and wide, it undermines the value of this intellectual property and adversely affects the rights owner. Close quote. The site goes on to remind viewers that the devices that allow extraction of ROMs are illegal, that the ROMs are illegal, and that websites and content providers that link to or host ROMs can be held liable for copyright and trademark violations.
On one hand, it would be easy to fault Nintendo for using such a heavy-handed approach to policing their copyrights, but on the other hand, Nintendo seems to be one of very few companies who are attempting to meet the creator community with some kind of compromise, even if I might still feel like it's not quite meeting in the middle, especially with its apparent willful blindness to fair use which is likely a violation of the DMCA Section 512F, and likely a violation of the case precedent set in Lentz v. Universal Music last year. If I have my calculations correct, a YouTube creator who monetizes their entire channel through the Nintendo Creator Program gets to keep about 38.5% of their YouTube revenue, and a creator who monetizes a single video through the Nintendo Creator Program gets to keep 33% of their YouTube revenue for that one video. So, problem solved, right? Do you think this goes far enough, or do you agree with me that Nintendo shouldn't be attempting to monetize videos that are clearly fair use? If Nintendo continued with the creator's program, but did start accounting for fair use, would that be the best solution? Can you think of a more appropriate arrangement? Or should Nintendo just go pound sand and accept that they benefit from the creator community creating videos regardless of copyright infringement? Leave your thoughts in the comments below and I'll respond to as many as I can. I'm currently working on a number of new videos for you. It's just a matter of time before you have videos on the Bible Reloaded case, the Oculus lawsuit, or rather both of them now that John Carmack has filed one of his own, the Google Waymo lawsuit v. Uber, where Google claims an employee stole trade secrets relating to Google's self-driving vehicles, and an update in the H3H3 case where Judge Forrest says she will have a ruling on the motions for summary judgment shortly. Oh, and Sid Alpha continues to get claims on his Asset Flipper series, so I'll probably talk about how that plays out in a future video as well. Thank you to all of my Patreon patrons, especially to Joshua Meinsinger, who is currently supporting at the $50 per month level, and anyone who donates $5 or more per month gets put on the LED panel behind me and in the description below. Thanks for watching, I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and I wish you all the best, and I'll see you again in my next video.